Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the National Association of Hispa Hispanic Publications and Media, along with the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, on this webinar to provide resources and technical assistance for economic relief resources for minority and small business and publications. To ask questions, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen in order to engage with the panelists on this call. At this time, it is our honor and privilege to introduce Ricardo Hurtado with the National Association of Hispanic Publishers and Media. Ricardo? Thank you, good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Ramiro, thank you. And on behalf of the National Association of Hispanic Publishers, Media Side, our, our board president, Fanny Miller, and the entire board want to thank you for the opportunity. Um, as we move along these uh, new times, we are very concerned of what's going to happen to our publishers. And our job is to provide resources, education, as well as revenue, so that we all can continue to do our jobs properly. I want to thank you, Ramiro, for spending, spending the time today uh, and for engaging on creating this uh, meaningful relationship uh, this partnership that will hopefully will bring us um, benefit, mutual benefits. So without being said, uh, we have a list of great publishers here today that are, that are eager to learn about information and see how we can help them um, get some, um, some of this funding into their pockets so that we can continue to operate as uh, business owners and as newspaper owners. Uh, turn it out to you, Ramiro. Thank you, Ricardo, and thank you for your leadership with the National uh, Association of Hispanic Publications. Uh, for us at the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, uh, it is our, our privilege to have a, a very uh, important uh, relationship, not just with Latino-owned businesses in America, the 4.5 mil million businesses, uh, but with you and your publishers who are themselves uh, entrepreneurs every day, making sure to connect our consumers with uh, the services that they need and also represent the opportunities to uh, showcase and to market and, and to sell uh, the messages, not just behind our products and services, but the important messages about recovery during this uh, uh, virus and also uh, the opportunities for us to work together uh, more closely. There are 60 million Latinos that live in America. There are 250 Hispanic chambers in our network, but we also consider part of our network uh, the 1,000 plus uh, American corporations uh, and the members of the National Association of Hispanic Publications. We need to work together and we're going to have to to make sure that this recovery uh, post uh, uh, COVID-19 is successful and so i just want to thank you and your membership for everything you do i see some some great friends like clemente and others anita on the call i want to quiero darles muchos uh, de ustedes uh, una cálida uh, una, un cálido abrazo y, y, y bienvenidos a, a su cámara and i just want to welcome everybody with a warm hug and and, and welcome to uh, your national hispanic chamber for us this webinar is important because we wanna provide uh, direct resources and answers to questions about how to take advantage to the Paycheck Protection Program or any other resources that we can help our publishers uh, help their small business and obviously people that you all communicate to every day. Um, the last thing I wanted to say on behalf of our board of directors, our chairwoman Carmen Castillo and, and our, our, our many members and uh, and the relationships that we have through our chambers around the country. Uh, we take this responsibility very serious and we've been working hard uh, and lobbying hard to make sure that we put some more money into the stimulus package to make sure that uh, we put some money out there in liquidity immediately into our businesses to allow our Latino owned businesses and publishers like many of you to survive uh, uh, over this eight week period that our economy has been struggling. So. With that, uh, with our support and many prayers, and then the tangible uh, assets that we bring uh, today, thanks to our team, Leroy uh, on our staff and, and many others, uh, estamos a la orden, uh, Ricardo, para apoyarnos uno al otro. We're honored to help each other out. So Ricardo, let me give this back to you and your membership. We're humbled to be with you today. 
Thank you, Ramiro, and um, thank you for those kind words. And that's exactly what we're looking for, uh, build the partnership and get resources. Um, we have on the line Clemente, who uh, we found out today, he just shared the news that he actually was already approved for the payroll protection program. And we're very happy for him. Uh, I'm not sure how many publishers have already been approved. I know we have applied and most of the publishers have applied, but Clemente, would you, would you share your story with, the, with our publishers of how you got approved? Well, this is, uh, as I talked uh, a few minutes ago, uh, I am trying to apply with two big banks. Uh, I have been working with Negocio now for a long time. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't make it with them. Uh, I received a, uh, a phone call from a very small bank, say, hey, Clemente, uh, if you don't apply for the PPP, uh, do it with us. And I, I did it. Uh, it was very fast. It was very simple, and I received the uh, notification, the letter, notification letter that we, I, we, I, I, I was approved. But I, I am very, very concerned with the rest of uh, business owners that have been talking to me, sending me email message. They can't uh, apply easy for uh, for the PPP and other more complicated uh, the loan from the SBA. Uh, and I tell you, so maybe 50%, like the U.S. Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, told the other day, of the small business will disappear after that because they don't have clients, they don't have uh, um, money, they are they are struggling to access to the the uh, the loan, and and we need to help them. We need uh, to help them. I don't know why, but uh, we. We are talking with the city of Chicago, with Cook County, with the state of Illinois, in order to, to talk with officials and say, hey, we need additional help for uh, Latino business community. Uh, the paper, our paper is, I, I am very happy with the PPP, but you know, Ricardo, the all papers, almost all papers are in risk right now. We uh, negotiators now have to postpone or uh, cancel Latino 40 on the 40 event with $50,000. Uh, we have to postpone who is who is part in Chicago over $120,000. And all, I am sure 100% that we need to postpone other events. The total of the, um, the amount that I will receive for events is over $200,000. I received a check from uh, PPP, $7,000. I am happy, but uh, we need more. And the, the problem with the, uh, with the small businesses that run papers is that we are not a restaurant. We are the company uh, to inform the Latino business community, not only Hispanic business community, the 60 million that uh, Ramiro said, so we are key now to inform the community about uh, the uh, COVID-19. Because you know, we have, we found a lot of fake news in, in social media and, and, and we need to provide professional news. At this time we can save life. And that's the reason that, that I say that the Hispanic uh, or minority business owners that run paper have to get a priority when we talk about help Hispanic beings or you help a small beings. That's my point. A Thank priority. you. Thank you, Clemente. Leroy? And, and uh, before we hear from our great colleague, Le Leroy uh, Cavazos, who's our head of government affairs, who's been doing an incredible job uh, leading our, our efforts with the uh, PPP, I wanted to just respond quickly, Ricardo, if I may. Sure. to Clemente. Uh, I'm so glad, Clemente, to see you. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm so glad that you uh, were approved for the PPP. It's important that you tell your story like Ricardo asked you to tell because it's important that we, we also recognize that we can't give up when we, these programs are put in place for small businesses. We, we really need to, as Latinos and Latinas, show up and try. 
uh, to get uh, approved. The money has run out, but there's going to be another 250 billion put in because it was not enough. The the uh, two or three quick things I want to share, Ricardo, before we open it up to Leroy to share what's coming forward. Uh, only 52% of our 4.5 million Latino-owned businesses in America uh, have a banker. And so initially, only people that had a relationship with a bank uh, were able to apply and, and get uh, the, uh, the work done uh, for the, the support through the PPP uh, the other 48% are the ones right now that are waiting with this next round. And we're putting some funding, not just for the banks, uh, but also for community lending, for community development, finance uh, institutions, uh, and, and other uh, minority owned and uh, credit unions and other corporations to provide lending. Uh, it, I'm glad to see that Cook County and City of Chicago and cities all around the country, the local and municipal governments, Ricardo, have stepped up to put dollars in there for micro loans or small loans also. And then corporations have started their own funds also to supplement the federal dollars. Uh, we've been building a plane as it's been flying in, in how we've responded to the new programs that have been put in place. And so I would just tell everybody not to give up no se rajen, keep asking, don't take no for an answer. Uh, do what uh, Clemente did, is just keep pushing and pushing and uh, there'll be more money coming and you'll hear more from that from Leroy and other things that we're trying to do. Uh, I'm glad to hear that story, Clemente, because we want to hear more of those stories uh, of the lending that has happened. Uh, what we don't know is how many of those loans of the 350 billion are going to Hispanic owned firms, women owned firms, African American, own firms. And that's what we uh, uh, want to ask the federal government to get us more details and information uh, on that. So with that, uh, I, I just want to thank you, Clemente, for, for your, the power of your story, your leadership, and, and for uh, your tenacity. So with that, Ricardo, uh, um, I will give it back to you to give to, to Leroy. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I think that um, the different cities have different pockets of money, whether it comes in for private funding, whether it comes in from institutions or federal government. Philadelphia uh, does have different pockets of funding and they do have community grants for up to $5,000 if you're billing up to $500,000 and then it goes all the way up to $150,000. But of course, that money ran out. I do know that uh, cities like Miami, Philadelphia, New York, and other cities like LA, they have funding, additional funding that uh, is available. And also there are many grants uh, available for, for publishers uh, that are coming up. So I, I, at this time, I'd like to have uh, Leroy uh, come in and take over. So Ricardo, I'm gonna go straight into it and thank you so much. Um, we have a, a hand raised from Gail Smith. So I think that the best thing is that we, can, we start taking questions in order to provide as much technical assistance as possible. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead. Gail, you are unmuted. Please proceed to ask your question or give your comment. Hi there, everyone. And uh, thank you both to NHAP and for USATC for having this. I think obviously, uh, you know, we all read and know what's, uh, what's out there, but any additional information that we can glean uh, certainly is welcome. So I just wanted to share that, um, uh, uh, Rodrigo, you said that uh, uh, people who do not have a banking relationship are the ones that are waiting. But I, for example, have a banking relationship with Bank of America. I applied, I couldn't apply the first day, but I applied the second day. I got a response saying that they wanted documents for me to, you know, sh uh, upload my documents, which I did. And then it stopped. <laughs> no more information. I've written them two, three times. You can't reach them. Nobody responds. Nobody, there's like a black hole. So I have a bank, you know, I've, ha I've had a bank for, you know, 11 years with Bank of America. So I've had a relationship with them for a long time. And I still could not get, uh, I, I, to this day, I don't know if I'm approved or not approved. And then of course now they've run out of funds. So I don't know what that means, you know, since my application was one of the first that, to go in. Right. So it's Gail, extremely frustrating. Gail, thank you. Uh, if I may, Leroy, just uh, 
thank you, Gail, for your friendship and your support. Uh, and uh, please send us uh, your information so we can connect you uh, with uh, leaders at Bank of America to get you a, a response sooner than later. Uh, I know Perfect. Leroy uh, and, and the staff, all of us, we have a, our website, uh, uh, ushcc.com. Uh, we have information in Spanish and English, uh, and we have uh, been answering many, many questions and also personally emailing uh, people we know at banks uh, through the power of our network and also uh, the, uh, the folks at the Small Business Administration to answer technical questions. Gail, I'm sorry to hear that. Please uh, email us your information, anybody, uh, Ricardo, in your network that we can uh, help with and answer questions. Uh, it's right now we need each other to, to help and, and again, not take no for an answer. So uh, let's keep pushing, Gail. Send us the information and, and give okay. us any specifics so we can help you with that. And, and Leroy, yeah. you. thank you, Gail. Yeah, and, and, I, and I just also want to compliment what, uh, what was said before about the uh, key uh, critical nature of publications being able to survive. At the end of the day, we are the only place they get that the community is getting information the spanish-speaking uh, um uh, a community so you know it is absolutely critical that that uh, we survive and you know one thing that's happening in new york and you know i'm going to just put that out there for all of you that are in different cities um new york city we work through the uh, new york city press office and they've been very active uh we met with the mayor and what they've done is they've pulled money to support uh, ethnic media with advertising during this time. So, you know, we're getting advertising to help us uh, uh, through this, you know, a very tough uh, cycle. So, you know, that's an avenue that I, I encourage all of you to, uh, to try is to go through your local city offices, like the mayor's office, to try to uh, get support. Thank you, Gail. That's a very good comment. And Ramiro, thank you. I think that uh, having the ability to answer questions or have a, a closer link connection to the big banks for our publishers would definitely provide a, a beneficial um, outcome for them. We'll be happy to help and, and thank you everyone on the call. The, even if you don't have a question now, uh, I think it's important that we hear from uh, from uh, Leroy uh, for everyone to know what we're working on, what we've been doing, and then open it up to maybe some questions if anybody has any. Excellent, so our, our one, one more question that is in the chat that I, I think we, is the kind of the, the, the elephant in the room is from Lina Mariscal, all the way from uh, Sol de Medianoche in the state of Alaska. And Lina's question is, the pay Paychecks Protection Program has ran out of money. Our Latino business communities have been left behind. Some of them not even knew about these programs in the first place. How do I survive as a community newspaper relying on advertising alone to make sure our community gets information if I do not qualify for any loans? So Lina, I want to address your question and I'm going to share my screen here because there are, um, there are uh, some resources that you can use um, that are out there from the SBA that I think are very important. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen right now so that we can get this presentation up. Um, and I want to I wanna direct you, Lina, to, to not lose hope, first of all, to know that you're not in this alone, that a lot of people are in this similar situation. Um, your, your newspaper, your publication should be able to qualify for the Economic Injury Disaster and Emergency Injury Grants from the SBA. This is money that the SBA is going to be giving out. Now, on the Paycheck Protection Program, we don't want people to think that this money will not be replenished. There are right now current advocacy efforts on Capitol Hill and lawmakers are talking to one another to replenish this program with more funding. Um, as the program did run out of funding late last night. Uh, banks have, have operated and lent out money uh, in unprecedented numbers as they never have in the past. 
but we expect that this program will probably get a replenishment by sometime early next week. So do not stop applying for these programs. Do not stop applying for these, bank, for these loans. You need to be in communication as Clemente illustrated with, bank, with your bankers and with other smaller minority depository lending institutions in your communities because they will also hopefully receive some of this money to lend out. The key here is, is that you have your application in and that you're part of that queue that when this money does get replenished, you're able to already be in line for it. So the sooner that you submit your paperwork and the sooner that you call your bank, the better off you're going to be. And, and it's so important. And I know that in a, in a time of distress, this type of advice is hard to, to, to give and it's hard to take. However, Right now, we are definitely dealing with unprecedented times in this country. So no one's really been through something like this before. The government has never operated through a time like this before. So we must continue to be vigilant and we must continue to make sure that we are in that line that is fulfilling these loans. Um, but I do want to tell you, Lena, that your business should qualify if it's set up as an LLC or as a sole proprietorship. It should qualify for an economic injury disaster loan. Uh, what I have shared right now on my screen tells you about this program. You can also learn more about the program at sba.gov. And we know that people at the SBA are processing these loans and that they are getting out there. So we need to make sure to, to be in line. There's another question, Ricardo, that just came into the queue. I'm going to pull it up real quick. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can pull it up. Um, the next question that we have on here is from... From Susie Rios. Susie Rios says, banks are telling business owners to go in the portal to do the application. We have many owners that don't know how to use a computer or read write. This is so sad. At the same time, the banks are willing to open these business accounts, but aren't willing to assist them on PPP. Susie, my best advice to you is right now, the MBDA has centers across the country. I'm not sure what part of the country you're in, but the, the MBDA has centers where uh, they're giving technical assistance to people who are currently facing these challenges, who don't have access to technology or who don't have access to, to a computer or who don't have internet access at home. And these centers across the country are providing that technical assistance. The other avenue for, for businesses to fill out applications is um, for them to contact their local Hispanic chambers. A lot of our local Hispanic chambers are providing on the ground technical assistance as well. And then we're also working right now with uh, some of our corporate members, specifically Google, to, to create a platform in order to get technical assistance out to people, whether it be through public libraries or in other, in a safe space where people can access computer use and internet use. We understand that, that the, the notion of having internet or having a computer is one that unfortunately our community suffers from. And we're working with our telecommunications partners at Comcast, at Verizon, at T-Mobile to make sure that the accessibility of internet is available in low minority income communities and to Hispanic businesses. So please, Susie, do not lose hope and please look for the nearest MBDA center in your community to potentially get some technical assistance on filling out those grants. Um, the next question comes to us from, from Price Arredondo and Price Arredondo asks, small business development centers are also available to assist minority businesses. I think you're echoing what, what I was just talking about and, and you're absolutely right, Price. Those centers are there. That's what they are designed to do. The MBDA receives stimulus money to make sure that these centers are activated in communities. Um, and so please, please go to these centers, call these centers. We need to be vigilant in using 
the resources that are currently out there for our communities to bounce back. And, and the MBDA centers are, are a big part of that equation and a big part of that solution. So we need to make sure that if you have the ability as a publisher or as a media source to find the nearest MBDA center and direct people there, they will help you because they are actively doing technical assistance as we speak. Hi, Leroy, it's Brianna. In the chat, we have a few questions. I think you touched on this about independent contractors and sole proprietors and if they qualify. So that's a great question. And thank you, for Brianna, for bringing up questions that are in the chat. Um, we were having this discussion right before we started the webinar. And so the, the, the story on 1099 employees or contract employees, if a 1099 employee or a contracted employee was part of your payroll in 2019, you are able to use that sum of money to apply for the payment protection program. However, if that employer, if that 1099 contractor has changed, then you cannot use that sum as part of your paycheck protection program. So the only time when a 1099 or contracted employee qualifies is if that person was on your payroll in 2019 and if that person still remains as part of your payroll today. Um, we're trying to do more advocacy to be more lenient on 1099 and contract employees and we're working in collaboration with Treasury to try and, and open these rules up a little bit more and not have them be so stringent because it's a proven fact that the Hispanic business community uh, operates in a great part and depends in a great part uh, to contract employees or, or, or 1099 employees. So we're working on that advocacy right now and we're hoping that some of these parameters around 1099 and contracted employees will be open so that it can be more inclusive of the Paycheck Protection Program. Brianna, any other questions that are, have come in the chat? No, not that you haven't already answered. Let me check again. We remind everybody that if you have any questions to either to submit it through the Q&A feature on, on, on the bottom of your screen. Um, and then I think we just had one come in. We have a question from Enrique Rivera. I have been talking to Hispanic and Latino small business owners who keep saying that they were not sure if to apply or not because at the time PPP opened, their business was doing okay, but now they are hurting. I think we as chambers need to notify all businesses to not wait and apply as soon as possible, even right now as we wait for the next round of funding. Thank you, Enrique Rivera, President and CEO of the Idaho Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Enrique, I, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. And, and as Ramiro alluded to earlier, we do need businesses to continue applying. This is, this is like getting in a large economic line and you want to be at the front of that economic line. So the sooner that businesses apply, the sooner they are added to that economic stimulus line. And that's what we as Hispanic chambers, as Hispanic publishers, and, and, and as national organizations have the economic responsibility of doing is educating business owners to make sure that they are in that line. That is so key and, and, and thank you for letting your businesses know and educating your businesses in Idaho um, about, about being a part of that line. Leroy, uh, for, some of the, for some of our publishers, can we talk a little bit about specifics of the uh, pay protection program and what that includes, what people are allowed to put in there? Um, I, I know uh, publishers have a lot of contractors, 1099 employees that handle uh, distribution, that handle uh, editorial content. Uh, how do they qualify to be in your pay protection program? So let me go through that real quick. Uh, Ricardo, and thanks, thanks for that question. Obviously, the Paycheck Protection Program is something that, that right now, like we said, is being replenished. But a couple of high points on, on the PPP. Employers must maintain their, their payroll. To, to, so that the paycheck protection loan can be forgiven. So very important. A lot of people have asked the question, 
What if we've already laid off employees? This program is retroactive through February 15th, 2020. If you get approved for that program, we highly encourage people to bring their employees back to work because that, that is what this program was designed to do. This program was designed so that people could remain with their current employers and not go to an unemployment model or to go apply for unemployment funding. So very important. If you have already laid people off and if you get approved for the PPP, you need to bring those people back to work so that at the end of all this, that loan can be forgiven. Um, the loans will be uh, the, the, because they 70. Another thing is a lot of people have asked, what can the loan be used for or how can the loan be forgiven? So 75 percent of the loan has to be used for payroll purposes. The other 25% of the loan can be used to pay the rent on a building, can be used to make payments such as water, light, electricity. So a lot of people have asked that question. So the easiest way to think about it is that if you get Paycheck Protection Program approval for $100,000, $75,000 of that $100,000 must go to your payroll. The other $25,000 can be used to keep your business open, to buy stuff from a supply chain, to keep your business operational, or, or to continue servicing your customers. But it's very important because the last thing we want is for business owners to get this money in their hands and then use it the wrong way um, and then it not be forgiven because it was used the wrong way. So part of our, our educational responsibility is that we're letting people know how to use that, that money accordingly. Um, the other thing that I wanna uh, uh, highlight is that um, this program does not have any SBA, SBA fees. So if anybody out there is telling or misleading our businesses and telling them that this program has fees, that is not true. There are, we, we, we as, as publishers and as educational organizations to the small business community, we have to be soundly aware that there are existing scams out there surrounding these these programs and these loans. So we, we got to be the ones that squash those misnomers in minority communities. So it's very important that we understand that there are no fees attached to applying for these programs. So people don't have to be paying any fees to be a part of the program. So um, a, direct a direct question for the program. If my employees 1099 were not on my 2019 payroll, do, I, do they qualify as my income for a loan or do they have to be my, pay, they have to be my payroll on the year 2018 to qualify? Well, actually it would be your payroll from 2019 because as you pay payroll taxes into the IRS, those employees would have appeared on those payroll taxes. So we want to make sure that, so, so to answer your question, if they were with you in 2019 and they're still with you now, you can use their contracted dollar amount as part of your Paycheck Protection Program application. But they need to still currently be um, providing services to the organization. Did, did that answer your question, Ricardo? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Leroy. Excellent. We have another question from, two more questions in the Q&A from Sergio Mendoza. I've reduced my employees' hours from 80 to 60. That's 75%. Can, can, it, be, can it all be forgivable? Um, Sergio, my answer to your question is the following. If you've reduced your employees' hours, but you still have them employed, you still qualify for PPP. If you apply for PPP and you get approved, you need to bring those employees back to their full, uh, to their full hours so that you can get that forgiven at the end. So it's very important because like I said, the point of this program is to keep people employed and avoid them going on to unemployment. So um, if, you do get, if you do get approved for PPP and you can bring those employees back to their full hourly, uh, their full hours on a weekly basis, that is gonna be your best guarantee to getting it forgiven. 
The next question comes from Ricardo Rodriguez. My bank is no longer taking more PPP loan applications. Is there any way to apply at this moment? So Ricardo, the easiest, the, the, the easiest answer to your question is as soon as the program gets replenished, banks are gonna start accepting applications again. However, there are some smaller community banks, uh, CDFIs, and credit unions that are still taking applications. Just because if, if you're a customer at a certain bank and that bank has turned you away for some reason, that doesn't mean that you cannot go apply somewhere else. There are banks out there that are taking non-customers as part of PPP. Um, so we, we encourage you to look for those other financial institutions in your community. Uh, look for a CDFI, look for a, look for a credit union, uh, look for a, another minority depository uh, institution like a community bank or a regional bank. Because chances are if one of the big banks didn't take you, one of those smaller banks may still be accepting applications at this time. Thank you, Roy. Uh, how about grants available for publishers? What do you know, what do you have in the notes to, that is coming out for publishers to take advantage of? So I know that a lot of private entities uh, have, have established funds. There's a, a very good resource guide on our website. And actually I can show people through this window how to access them on our website. Um, I think that this is important for, for, for you guys to know. So if, if you all go to our website at www.ushcc.com, you will, you will be introduced here to our landing page. Um, and it, so right here on our landing page, this is, this is where you'll come to. If you go down, we have right here two resource guides. One of them is specific to the CARES Act, and they're both in English and in Spanish. We're trying to produce under the leadership of our board and Ramiro as much of our materials bilingually so that the information gets out there to the Hispanic community. We're also pressuring the administration, the SBA and Treasury to put out bilingual resources, not only in Spanish, but in languages native to the region where they're providing assistance. This guide right here, the resource and technical assistance guide, I'm going to click on it. Right here, Ricardo, you will see besides the SBA lending, if you keep scrolling through it, there is a whole five or six pages on corporate resources. These are American corporations who have defined their responsibility civically and economically to disadvantaged businesses right now during this crisis and have put together either forgiveness programs, they are waiving fees, um, they have instituted um, free internet hotspots in the, in the case of our telecommunications. Some like Facebook have started uh, and Google have started actual funding to help small businesses or have implemented platforms to help small business move forward. Um, there's EEI, there's Uber Eats, there's a ton of resources here. And I invite people to go look at them because not all of these may fit your business model, but one of them may. So it just depends how you're structured and it depends what you would qualify for. And then we continue to advocate with our national partners to make sure that corporate America continues to help the small business community by incorporating us into the American supply chain and by continuing to make sure that we're doing a call to action to corporate America to continue to sustain the small business community. So please visit our website for this resource. Like I said, it's, it's it's here in English and in Spanish because it is a very uh, important um, resource and you never know how it can help your business. It's one of those things. If you don't apply, if we don't try, if we don't get educated on what's out there, we'll really never know if, if, if we could have leveraged some of that funding or not. Hey, Leroy, we have some more questions coming in. Can I read a few? Yes. How much uh, can we apply for from the PPP? How many months of pay? I believe it was 2.5 months, right, Leroy? Correct. 
Yeah, it's retroactive April 15th. I mean, I'm sorry, February 15th, 2020 through June the 1st. So a lot of it's actually more it's actually more about three and a half months. It's 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 March, April, May, and June for yeah, so it's like three months and fifteen days. Part of that same question was how much do you apply for? So the way that the, the way that the application works is that you take you take your your payroll whatever it was the last pay period that you that you paid and then you you estimate obviously how much you've been affected so if if you're in a state that began to see the effects of covid-19 since february you can retroactive that until february 15th so most companies do do payroll on a monthly or a biweekly basis so you can start at the payroll of february the 15th or if you're a company that pays on a monthly basis you take the payroll that you uh, that you dished out on february the 29th I believe we're in a leap year. Yes, February 29th. So, so that's how you get that number is you, you, you take your actual payroll, what you paid um, when you first started getting affected by COVID-19. Leroy, there is also a notion, some banks have mentioned that you're able to put in the $10,000 advance on the ADIC loan into your, into your payroll protection program. Is that correct? And if so, can you explain it, explain it a little bit more about this $10,000 advance loan? Sure. So the $10,000 advance is once you're approved for the payment protection program, let's say you got approved for 100,000. I always use 100,000 because it's a nice round fat number. Um, you can ask the SBA to expedite, uh, or treasury, I'm sorry, to expedite $10,000 of that 100,000. So while you're waiting on $90,000, they can expedite $10,000 in 72 hours. But it's once you've been approved. So once you've been, it's kind of like asking for a cash advance. So once, once you get a, once X business is approved for $100,000, it's going to take them a little bit, probably five to seven to 10 business days to get that money. But you can ask for a $10,000 advance on that money, get $10,000 in 72 hours, and then once it's all processed, you'll get the other $90,000 in due time. Uh, uh, Leroy, is everybody guaranteed approval, or are there any specific qualifications for publishers to know? Uh, what do they have to keep in mind, or is this a guaranteed program where everybody's approved regardless? Um, I mean, I, I don't think th there's not anything on the payment protection program. There's not any guarantee and there's not any specific, you know, it's not like applying for a regular loan where they're going to take collateral or where they're going to check your credit. It's as far as long as the funding is available. That's the key. And like in the, in the, in the moment in time we sit in today, right now, that is not available. So uh, when it becomes available again, when it's replenished, then you'll be able to reapply for it. Now, if you're, uh, if you're uh, applying for the economic disaster injury loans, those loans are contingent on your credit. Those loans are contingent on your ability to pay and, and, and if you have any collateral to offer. Those loans are low interest. Uh, they're they're three, no more than 3% interest and they're uh, paid over a period of 30 years. So, you know, while a lot of people, a lot, a lot of businesses out there have said, oh, Leroy, we don't want a loan. We don't want to pay, we don't want to have a debt. The thing that people need to understand is that this is a debt at a very low interest. This is a debt that will, will, will be paid over a long period of time of 30 years. And this is a debt that essentially, given that we're living in unprecedented times in America, you never know when, these, when that type of disaster debt can be deferred. Like right now, if anybody out there has a current disaster loan with the SBA, those payments right now are deferred through January, 2021. So because we're navigating unchartered territory, legislatively speaking, you never know when a stimulus package in the future could include deferment or forgiveness for some of those loans. So we are encouraging everybody to apply and take advantage of them. 
I also have some questions over here in the Q&A. Brianna, do you have another question? Yeah, somebody asked a good one because I know it's also in our guide. What loans are available outside of the PPP? And there are so many great resources that we have prepared that we can share with everyone. Great. So, so other loans that are that are available to you outside of PPP. That is a great question. Um, we're 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 obviously the economic disaster relief loans that I just that I just talked about right now. The other ones that are very popular in the small business community are 7A loans. 504 loans and micro loans. So these loans under this program, the SBA will cover all loan payments on these loans, including principal interest and fees for six months. This relief will also be available to new borrowers who take out loans within six months of the president signing the bill into law. So basically of March of this year. So these are loans that you can access through your banks. These are loans that you can access through your credit unions. My Micro loans can be accessed through CDFIs. And again, like I was saying, you, we, we don't know what the future looks like. So if you need a loan right now to keep your business open and you have the credit and the availability to acquire one of these loans, as it is, the principal and the interest and the fees are being forgiven for six months by the SBA. And, and two, we don't know what future stimulus packages could hold for these types of loans. So um, really, you have nothing to lose at this point because they're not even asking you to make a payment for six months on these loans. So at this point, being Hispanic, being minority owned, being woman owned has no effect on your type of, 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 of your, on your business getting a loan. Right, correct. And Ricardo, there are some other questions here because uh, I know we're, we're running short on time. Sure. Um, it, it, Ricardo asked, is it okay to apply in more than one place? If you're applying for the payment protection program, I would only apply in one place um, because you don't want duplication or you don't want government bureaucracy to get in the way of you acquiring that program because they saw your name on the list twice or they saw your tax ID number on a list twice or there's some type of interference with you applying. So I would just apply in one place. If you've already applied and you're waiting, then I would keep following up with the financial institution that, 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 you, that you applied with. The other question is from Elena Rivers. Elena says, I applied for the EDIL and PPP when it first came out. I have reference numbers but have not received anything. I had all my docs ready. I went through my bank portal with Bank of America. What do you suggest I do? Elena, on the EDIL side of things, that if you have your reference number for EDIL, you can call SBA directly and they can give you a status on the loan. I will say that, that right now wait times at the SBA are pretty lengthy because of the amount of inundation and of people that they have. The traffic is, is high right now, but you can get uh, an update. As far as the payment protection program, Elena, I would say that you need to contact your banker directly with that reference number to give you, um, uh, to give you a, uh, a status update. I, I've been saying this at, at, at many, uh, in many webinars, um, we are, you know, Latino businesses are clients to any bank out there. So it is also our responsibility to hold our, our financial institutions accountable and the people that we do banking with and the places where we hold our money. So it's very important that we have good transparent communication with our bankers because at the end of the day, we cannot villainize our banking institutions. Our banking institutions are there to help us and they are chartering through un, un, unknown territory just as much as we are. So this is not the time the banks are not our enemies. The banks are there, are fountains of hope and fountains of help to our business community. And I know that it's frustrating given the situation that our country is currently in. But at the end of the day, banking institutions are on our side and we just need to be the, the vessel that holds them accountable and that gets the help that we need from them. Uh, another question that I'm getting here is from Alfonso Rybot. For small chambers that have lost 
uh, most of revenues and are still operating but have expenses that are essential to continuing operations? What is the process, if any, for financial assistance? So Alfonso, this is a great question. A lot of chambers, because we are membership-driven organizations, we are under statute as 501c6s as part of the Internal Revenue Code. And unfortunately, right now, as we stand, 501c6s cannot access this funding, but we are fighting that in the next round, they include 501c6s and we're advocating daily and we're not the only ones. There's a lot of people out there advocating on this one issue. Um, so we hope to get our Hispanic chambers and, and other chambers across the country the help that they need. Um, there's a program out there from the U.S. Chamber Foundation. There's the programs that I illustrated from Facebook and from Google that chambers have the opportunity to apply for. So there is some type of funding out there. And then the other thing that I ask for chambers to consider, there's a lot of chambers out there that operate with both a 501c3 and a 501c6. If your chamber has a 501c3 foundation attached to it, you can can apply for the funding through the 501c3. So that's very important that, that you know, um, that, that, that we express to you guys that if your chamber does have both a C6 and a C3, you may be eligible for funding under the C3. But please rest assured that we continue to fight so that C6s can get that type of funding. Um, I'm going to take a last question right here. Um, it's from Maria Antuna, Maria with the Hispanic Chamber of Palm Beach County in Florida. Do all loans get approved? Uh, Maria, it depends what type of loan. The, the PPP loan, they, they, there hasn't, we haven't been able to monitor uh, a, a denial rate because it's something that's so new. So that data is not out there. I think we're gonna start seeing that data coming out in the next week or so. And a lot of national organizations like ours are asking for that data to hold accountability at Treasury. As far as the SBA loans, the disaster loans and the economic injury loans, those loans are approved based on a business's credit history, a business's ability to pay the loan, and a business's ability to present any type of collateral. So those loans are approved on a, on a normal basis as if a business was applying for a loan. The question has come up, should I not apply for a loan if I have bad credit? Remember that we are dealing right now in times of disaster. So don't be discouraged by a bad credit score or missing a payment on something because you may not be disqualified so easily. Because we are in, in disaster mode, because we are under a national pandemic right now, those, those, um, those uh, parameters around lending are, are being uh, flexible and are being in some instances waived. So that's why I tell people you have nothing to lose, you, you need to apply. Um, so at this time, uh, Ricardo, I'll turn it back over to you and to Ramiro for, for closing remarks. I hope that we were able to get to everybody's questions. And if we weren't, if there's a question that you have that you, can, that you did not get an answer to today, my email address was in your webinar registration confirmation. Please feel free to, to email us at the USHCC. Um, so that we can answer your questions or help you get answers to your questions. Uh, that's what we're, we're here for. We, we want to act as a technical assistance and research resource bridge for small business owners across the country. So at this time, Ricardo, I'll turn it over to you and Ramiro for closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Leroy. Thank you. Um, I think this was wonderful. It was the first webinar that we host, and we picked a great partner to do this. Uh, on behalf of our board of directors, I think we're very concerned with making sure our publishers maintain ability to operate as a business. Uh, at the end of the day, we are business owners. We employ, we uh, pay contractors, we pay printers. So we are part of the economy and we're very concerned to make sure that we maintain that way. So thank you for that, for this opportunity. Hopefully this is, not, this is one of many that we can do. And as the more stimulus packages develop, uh, we'll be right here to make sure that we continue to guide our community and our publishers to uh, take advantage of those programs. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. And 
And uh, I want to thank each of you for uh, joining us today. I want to thank the National Association of Hispanic Publishers for your commitment to getting the right messages out there uh, on behalf of our community and also on behalf of our customers and, and corporate and, and small business America. Uh, small business is big business, as you all know. And I think one of the, the things that I wanted to stress is there's no need to wait. I, I love the question from Idaho um, that was presented by the Chamber of Commerce. Um, you know, th there is no reason to wait. In fact, this is our time, as Ricardo and you all know, and, uh, you know, my dad had a, a saying, el pescado que se duerme, se lo lleva la corriente. And so right now, uh, to translate, you know, if, if, if you're a fish and, and you're just waiting in the water, uh, the current's gonna take you away. And some people use camarón instead of, uh, or shrimp uh, for fish. But I use that to say that as Latinos and Latinas, we need to be bold. We need to be proud of who we are. We need to own our own power. And right now, uh, power is being exercised to get liquidity into people's hands. So I would exercise your power to not give up, to, to answer uh, the call, uh, to help your businesses survive, especially if you're publishers, we need to keep as many of you uh, working and continuing in your businesses. Uh, to people like Gail and others that have applied, uh, at, you know, let us know how we can help direct you. Uh, give us your, your actual uh, information uh, to, to get that done. And, and, uh, and like Clemente, uh, who applied and, and was successful, keep doing it. I was looking at what the loans have been done, Ricardo, and 70% uh, of the loan applicants out of a million applicants, uh, 725,000 loans uh, that were approved were $150,000 and below, or just 15% of the overall amounts. So over a million dollars, a million loans have been done, 725,000 were $150,000 and below. A lot of small businesses, uh, or 15% of the overall dollars, and, uh, and another 15% were 150,000 to 350,000, and those were 156,000 loans. So a lot of the majority of the uh, the low the loan applicants that were approved were small businesses like the ones that we're representing today or talking to today. So don't give up. We're going to keep fighting to include 501c6s, las cámaras de comercio, and we're also going to try to put more liquidity, 250 billion dollars of extra cash out there for, for each of you that are still in the queue. And then uh, go to your community banks and community development finance corporations. The main thing is do not give up. And so gracias Ricardo a ti. Leroy, uh, really uh, uh, a big debt of gratitude. You've become an expert on the PPP, on our staff. We're just a team of six people, but uh, I would uh, uh, put Leroy up against 20 other people with any other organization because he has been uh, an inspiration in the way he's been helping he and Brianna and Richard and the rest of our staff, Felipe and Fernando, uh, we've been working around the clock answering questions and helping do the job that we're supposed to do as the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. So thank you for the work that you all do representing us as Latinos and the jobs you all create. Ricardo, gracias a ti por todo, thank you and NAHP, hopefully this is the first of many partnerships and programs and webinars that we can do together, not just on COVID-19, but on things uh, post-COVID-19 that matter where we can create more wealth and prosperity in the Latino business community. On behalf of our board of directors and our members, we're very honored to partner with you. Thank you. Thank you everybody for your participation today. This concludes today's webinar with the National Association of Hispanic Publications and the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. We appreciate your participation today and please visit our website for more information as we charter these unprecedented times in America at www.ushcc.com.